Ambassadors, good morning. This is Minister Asia. Terrific Thursday to you. I waited to the absolute last second to get dressed for work today because I was watching those very fantastic TikTok videos about patience. Um, the lighting is all off, but we're going to roll with it. The topic for today is you're going to have to eat that. Let's go ahead and say our mantra and get into the contents of this video. For I know who I am and whom did I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ, and this is the hour to recognize me. Let's say it again. For I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ, and this is the hour to recognize me. So, imagine with me, if you will. We're going all the way back to grade school on this thing. You and your family were seated at a buffet, and you know this has to be imaginary. Because with our friend, Rona Rona, nobody's going to be buffeting anytime soon. I know I won't be. So imagine if you were with your family, and you all were at a smorgasbord or buffet, and you all began to just go from the salad bar to the fruit bar to the hot bar, and you were just piling your plate and you sat down and the little kids do what they do they start mixing stuff together ice cream with this and that and just because they have too many choices at a buffet and so you as a parent or the parent if you if you're a kid you as a kid the parent looks to you and they tell you you know what you have to eat that if you mix all of that stuff together you will have to eat that and if you look down at the plate and it was mixed brussels sprouts with ice cream you really wouldn't want to eat that if you had the most delectable strawberries and instead of them being chocolate covered they were covered with gravy i really don't think you would want to eat that so when we come to us as believers and we talk about proverbs chapter 18 and it talks about how death and life lies in the power of the tongue most people i'm even guilty stop at the a clause but they don't look at the penultimate cause the, the b clause they don't look at the fact that and you shall eat the fruit thereof isn't that something the power of death and life lies within your tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof so when we're thinking and we're being cognizant and we're watching our mouth we have to realize that both death and life lies within the power of our tongue and we have to eat the very fruit of the things that we are saying hmm you gonna have to eat that that's why it's imperative to guard your tongue the bible says in the book of kings that 15 and i'll put all the scriptures in the description box so that you can take time in your private time to meditate upon the word of god i promise i'm gonna put these scriptures in the description box it says that let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth isn't that something you look in the bible it tells you that evil communication corrupts good manners. Isn't that something? We have to eat that. Everything that we say, the good and the bad, that's why we have to be cognizant and very, very mindful of the words that we are letting come out of our mouth. Don't let any corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Me, oh honey, I was a gossiper. Ooh, I like the good juicy tea. <laughs> piping hot tea but i have to remind myself asia myself says huh you are an ambassador for christ the power of death and life lies in your tongue and you shall eat the fruit thereof if you are mixing your strawberries with gravy you gonna have to eat that if bitter and sweet are flowing out of your fountain you are going to have to eat that. If you are confessing perpetually, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting, oh, I'm sick, I'm this. 
you're going to have to eat that. Before you know it, your buddy Arthur going to be knocking on your door. And you're going to be like, whew, there is a really an ache. I really am getting, oh, did my back just crack? Oh, something just popped. I don't feel like it used to. Because you're going to have to eat that. The words that you say, they are spirit and they are life. The power of death and life lies within your tongue. You will eat the fruit thereof. And so I was just thinking about that thing. If you're saying you're broke, if you're saying you're fat, if you're saying you're sick, if you're saying you're mad, those are the fruit that you will see manifest in your life. Those words are merely just seeds that you are sowing into the garden of your life and as you continue to say it you are watering those words and you will literally eat the fruit of what you are saying therefore it is imperative that as an individual you speak only the things you want to manifest in your life if you don't want to see negativity manifest in your life stop being negative if you don't want to see drama manifest in your life, stop being a drama king or queen. If you don't want to eat that, stop saying that. And I have to be real with myself. I have to speak to myself first because I know I have some good Judy's, good, good Judy's. We can go forward. I have a good best friend, my bestie. I love her. We can talk on the phone for hours. We do worship. We do speak the word. We do build conferences. We do godly things. But we have to make sure that we remain holy in all manner of conversation. Isn't that something? Ooh, that's a mouthful. That'll preach all by itself. So, I'll say it again. Remain holy in all manner of conversation ouch that means if you can't say amen just say ouch got him <laughs> i'm being very silly today the babies had me in a different kind of mood this morning i was excited first seeing them patients here's the little fruit snacks don't eat them till i come back then they look at them look at them for a few seconds they smell them touch them a little bit then the good babies with lots of patience don't eat them and they get so excited about their little treat when their mommy comes back but the babies the little naughty little savages they consume all those fruit they desire to eat that they desire the chocolate they want the good part but it's a training process patience is a work the bible depicts in the book of james that when patience has had her perfect work within you then you will be perfect and tired and wanting for nothing if you're patient enough to wait for daddy to come back jesus to come back god to come back the holy spirit to come back then you will be able to eat the reward the bible says the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life we have so many things stored up for us you know god is the husband man and Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches and if we live in him we are to bear much fruit but we want good fruit we want fruit that remains and that's John chapter 15 you know if it's hard for you and if you've been struggling and you've been mixing some toxic conversation with some holy conversation and you've been really struggling with gossiping and backbiting and cursing and things of that nature you have been very it's been a real struggle for you meaning that you don't just succumb to it you find yourself there and you try to backpedal and get your way out of it but it seems to keep finding you i'm gonna pray for you today ambassador that the lord god almighty girds your loins with truth that he gives you the strength the wisdom the power and the capabilities to speak life in every situation of your life and to begin to um, come off from among them and be ye separate. Do not touch the unclean thing. To remain holy in all manner of conversation. And to be that good ambassador. To represent him even among people that are not like you. When Jesus was here, he was not dining with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He ate with tax collectors, whoremongers, wine berberers, and things of that nature. And because he said those who are sick, 
they the one who need a physician. Those who hold need not a physician. He come not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance, okay? And so it's okay to go out there. But when you go out there, you have to draw them. You can't let them draw you. You have to be a light in a dark world. We live in a dark, fallen, messed up, jacked up world. And it's our role and our responsibility as an ambassador to be a beacon of light, a ray of hope, the difference and the change that this world needs to see. It starts within us. And we have to represent God well on our jobs, in our friendships, in our marriages, relationships, in every entity of our life. As parents, we have to be the forerunners and the leaders to show our children that we don't have to be um, driven and stuck to devices, that there's more to life than that. We can show them that they can talk well, act well, be well, all that good stuff. Because guess what? You're going to have to eat that. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for these, your ambassadors, who have tuned in to the Ambassador's Hour. And I pray, Lord God, that you touch them, that you strengthen them where they're weak, build them up where they're torn down, mold and shape them into the men, women, and children of God that you have called them to be. I ask, Lord God, that you make them whole, healed, delivered, and set free, that you bridle their tongue, and you let their words edify you, Lord God, and that you give them the strength and the wisdom and the guidance and the anointing to be an example for you in this earth. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for power, Lord God, the idios power of the Holy Spirit to deal with them both publicly and privately, to severally give them the gifts that they desire. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's decree and declare. I declare that I will speak life in every situation to every barren situation in my life. I declare that I will speak blessings and not cursings. I declare that I will bridle my tongue and my words will edify God. I declare that I will remain holy in all manner of conversation. I declare that I will speak I'm a speaking spirit, and the words that I speak, they're spirit and life, and I will speak life to those who are divinely assigned to me. I believe it in Jesus' name. So, if you didn't know, the Ambassador's Hour is a telecommunication outreach ministry. We're solely dedicated to speaking in present truths. We do car vlogs. We do daily um, word, where, like word Wednesdays, saturation Saturdays, things of that nature. We have quick fits fixes on the channel daily doses the quick fixes are under one minute you can nourish your soul in under one minute just scroll through the channel go ahead like share like share comment and subscribe go on over to facebook and like give a big thumbs up to loving people by sharing christ loving people by sharing christ is a christian support page founded by minister renata c mcfadden and heather there you will find god breathed daily devotionals memes gifts and other graphical illustrations of the undying love of jesus christ if you have a prayer request if you need someone to talk to you want to share your testimony go ahead and inbox the support page we'll get back with you rapidly okay and if you don't know jesus as your lord and savior i suggest that you get to know him if you don't know how please read romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 10 believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that jesus christ died on the cross for you and god raised him from the dead then guess what that makes you saved i love you so so much i thank you for your loyalty and i look forward to posting more videos but i haven't reached my destination goodbye for now